Hello, my name is Shahriyar Shahriyari, and this lecture is a part of an occasional series of lectures on general topics in undergraduate mathematics. The topic of this lecture is greatest common divisors for ordinary integers. Um, and some version of this uh, appears in my book, Approximately Calculus, and also in my other book, Algebra in Action, a course in groups, rings, and fields, as well as many, many other, uh, other uh, books as well. So let me tell you what the, the purpose of this lecture is, what our goal is. Our goal is to prove, to, uh, to prove one thing. And that one thing is to prove that a, a greatest common divisor is of two integers is always an integer linear combination of them. Um, I will tell you what a greatest common divisor is. And then uh, for two integers, as long as one of them is not zero, I will show that it's an integer linear combination of the two integers. This is not an obvious fact and it's proof and it's actually a very useful fact. It's one that we, we use in elementary number theory as well as group theory, as well as ring theory all the time. Um, um, so, um, and it's also generalizable to commutative rings in general. So in general, in, in commutative rings, um, it's not true that the, 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 there's always greatest common divisors, but for some rings there will be. And, and for some of them, it will also be true that uh, uh, the greatest common divisor is a linear combination of, of, the, of, the two, of the two elements. And those rings will actually be a special. Um, to do this, we will use two things, all, both subjects of a previous video. Um, the well-ordering principle, as well as the division algorithm. So we're going to use those to prove this fact about the greatest common divisor. So let me remind you quickly what those things are. So the well-ordering principle says the following. It says that if you have a non-empty collection of non-negative integers, so a bunch of um, integers, but none of them negative. So uh, they could be 0, 5, 47, whatever, a bunch of maybe infinite uh, number of um, non-negative integers. And um, then uh, well-ordering principle says that uh, this S will have a smallest number. A set of integers in general might not because you might have a sequence of integers going down to minus infinity. But if it's bounded below, if they're all greater or equal to zero, then there's bound to be a smallest member. This, that, this is, doesn't sound so profound and it shouldn't because this is one of the axioms we could take uh, for integers. If you want to write it a little bit more formally, we would say that if S is a non-empty collection of non-negative integers, there's an M in S such that M is less than or equal to S for all S in S. Um, and um, in a previous video, I explained that this is equivalent to the principle of mathematical induction. So if you believe induction, you can actually prove this well-ordering principle. Or if you take well-ordering principle as one of your axioms, then from that, you can prove that induction works. Um, so, um, so the well-ordering principle is an, ax is, is, is an axiom that we will accept. The division algorithm, which I proved in a previous video, actually using the well-ordering principle, um, says the following. It says that if you have two integers, n and m, and n is greater or equal to 1, then if you take m and divide it by n, you might not be able to divide uh, fully because of the, 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 because of the fact that m um, uh, might not be a multiple of n. But uh, in any case, you can get a quotient and a remainder. And, and the quotient and the remainder will be unique as long as you make sure that the remainder is not that big. So M, when you divide it by N, you get a quotient Q and a remainder R. That means that M is QN plus R. But this, and, and this is unique, the Q and R. It's not really unique. It is unique as long as you require that R is greater or equal to zero and less than N. And it basically says that if you start with N, M and take out, out of it as many ends as you can, eventually you're left with a remainder that's, that, that's non-negative. You, like, you won't go too far so that you get a negative number. Um, and it's less than N. Okay, now let's go talk about uh, our greatest common divisors. And, and we will use the division algorithm to prove a sort of a fundamental fact about greatest common divisors of, of integers. So uh, first, a little bit of notation. If A and B are two integers, we say that A divides B. That doesn't necessarily have to be true, but uh, I'll, I'm going to tell you what that means. A divides B, or A is a divisor of B, or what amounts to the same thing. B is divisible by A, or B is a multiple of A. These are all the same thing. One is saying A divides B. The other one says B divisible by A. 
A is divisor of B, B is a multiple of A. These all mean the same thing. These are all if B is A times K for some integer K. So if B is a multiple of K, multiple of A, we say that B is a multiple of A. But we also say that A divides B. And the notation we use is this A, a sort of a straight line and then B, and we read that A divides B. And this is a little bit um, um, uh, confusing because we're really taking B and dividing it by A and there's no remainder. This is what, what it means. That if you take B divided by A, you get no remainder. The reason it's confusing that you're used to writing B over A, but, but, but if there is no remainder, then we write A divides B. If A doesn't divide B, we write A with the same line, but we put a dash through it. Okay, now let me define for you greatest common divisors. If you give me two integers, um, um, the greatest common divisor of A and B, I'm not saying that such a thing exists, but this is gonna be the definition of what the greatest common divisor is. The greatest common divisor of these two integers is another integer D, and, and they denoted by GCD of A and B, which has three properties. First of all, it has to be greater than zero. So greatest common divisor has to be greater than zero. Secondly, it has to divide A and divide B. It has to be a common divisor. It has to be um, a divisor of A and a divisor of B. It has to divide A and divide B. A has to be a multiple of D and B has to be a multiple of D. But it also has to be the greatest one. But the way I like to say that is, is not to say that among all divisors, the biggest one. You could say that and that would work just as fine, but, but it's slightly more convenient to say it this other way, which is to say that if, you, if another integer walks through the door, C, and C also happens to A and divide A and B, so that C is a, also a common divisor of A and B, then not only C is less than or equal to D, but, but, and D is bigger, but C actually divides D. So, so, so I'm asking a little bit maybe more from a common divisor, but this turns out to be the same thing. And, um, and, and, and as I said, this is sort of uh, more convenient, but just saying that this is a greatest common divisor doesn't mean that they exist um, and, um, and, and we have to see if they do or not. So for example, uh, with this definition, if both of these numbers are zero, the greatest common divisor would not exist. Um, so the theorem uh, that we want to prove is the following that if at least one of them is non-zero, then the greatest common divisor exists. And um, not only that, uh, you can find two other integers, M0 and N0, such that the greatest common divisor of A and B is a linear combination of the two. So, um, uh, so the greatest common divisor always is a linear combination of A and B, M0A plus N0B, as long, and as long as these are integers, and as long as one of them is non-zero. So for example, the greatest common divisor of 12 and 20 is four. Four divides 12, four divides 20, and nothing bigger can do that. Um, and, 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 and you will see that four is two times 12, that's 24 minus 20. So plus minus one times 20. So those two integers are two and minus one, such that this linear combination is four. Okay, so let's try to prove that. This is the last thing I'm going to do in, in, this, uh, in this video. So um, since I'm trying to find out that the, that the greatest common divisor is a linear combination of A and B, I will look at the set of all linear combinations of A and B. So the set M is going to be MA plus NB such that M and N are in Z. And this should remind you of the proof of the greatest of, of the division algorithm, although we will actually somewhere along the way use the division algorithm itself also. So I look at all of them and, and, and I'm hoping that the greatest common divisor is among them, among these elements of M. And M has some positive integers. Why is that? Well, because um, uh, you know, you, if, if you put M and A, whatever A and B are, if you put M and N there, and if you get a um, positive number, well, okay, you have a positive integer, um, uh, but, but um, uh, because A and B are both not both zero, there's some non-zero numbers there for sure. If the first non-zero number you get is negative, then multiply M and N by a negative. And so you get the negative of that. And so there, you will get that positive. So M uh, might have some negative numbers, might have, uh, might have zero in there. In fact, we'll have zero in there for sure, but it will certainly will have some positive integers in there as well. And let D be the smallest positive integer in M. And, and again, now we're using the well-ordering principle that we're saying that um, don't look at all the elements in M, 
but look at all the positive ones. And those are, and, and we know there are some of them. So that's a non-empty set of positive integers. By well-ordering principle, there will be a smallest one. So let D be that smallest one. And our claim is that that D, that smallest linear combination is the greatest common divisor of A and B. Okay, so now we have to prove that. Uh, proof of this claim that D is the greatest common divisor of A and B. Um, so D is in M because it's the smallest positive integer in M. So that means that it is some linear combination M0A plus N0B um, of um, A and B. So I write D equals M0A plus N0B and M0 and N0 are integers. Okay, so what? Now, um, so what did we need for, for D to be a greatest common divisor? Uh, we needed for it to be greater or equal to zero. Well, it is a, it's in M, it's, so it's a positive. We wanted it to, uh, we needed to divide um, A and B. Um, and um, and so, so that's one thing we have to do. And, um, um, and then we had to say that um, if, if something else divides A and B, then it divides, um, uh, it divides, their, uh, it divides D also. But if C divides, if C some an integer that divides A and B, that means that um, it's, a, it's a factor of A and a factor of B, then it's also going to divide this linear combination, which was D, because you can factor a C from this A, a C from that B, and then you have a, a factor of the whole thing. So if C divides both A and B, then C automatically divides D. So that was that third condition that, that, that we wanted. So the only thing that we had left to do is to show that D actually is a divisor of A and a divisor of B. Now, what we will do is that we will prove, prove, prove something stronger. We prove that D not only divides A and B, but divides every element of M. Now, A and B are in M. Why? Because uh, you could take N to be zero and M to be one and you would get A. And you could take M to be one and uh, no, M to be zero and N to be one, and you would get B. A and B are elements of M. And we will show that this smallest um, um, positive integer in M not only divides A and B, which are two elements of M, it actually divides all elements of M. So that's what I'm going to do in the next slide. But I want to take a little tangent um, and tell you something um, for those of you uh, who are studying abstract algebra and, 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 and eventually will be studying ring theory. In ring theory, um, this set MA plus NB is the ideal generated by A and B, whatever that means. Um, ideal means that this set has the property that, um, first of all, it has zero in it, uh, but also if you take two elements in it and add it, um, they're in here. Um, you have negative, if you have something, it's negative is also in here, but it has also the important property that if you take anything in here and multiply it by any integer, any element of the big set Z, that still will be here. So if, if uh, 2a plus 3b is in here, and if you multiply it by 47, the result will again be a linear combination of a and b and will be here. That's what an ideal is. But if you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. Ideal is an important thing in ring theory. So this is the ideal generated by a and b. And what we're proving here is that this ideal is generated by the greatest common divisor of a and b, meaning that if you take the greatest common divisor, that's this D that we are finding, the smallest positive integer in M, then, um, then every other element of, uh, of this ideal will just be a multiple of D. Um, so, so if you just have D, this greatest common divisor, and if you just multiply it by, um, by, by all integers, you will get this M, you will get this ideal. And again, in ring theory, um, so, so that what that means is that any ideal um, um, of, of the integers is generated by just one element. Because if you have like, uh, if you want linear combinations of five things, well, find the linear combinations of two things. And, and that those are just going to be multiples of um, the greatest common divisor of those two things. And then just take that greatest common divisor and the third one and find their greatest common divisor. And that will give you all the linear combinations of the three things and so forth. And so in that way, you will get one thing, the greatest common divisor of all of those numbers, which will be the generator for that ideal. And, and, um, and in ring theory, this is a big deal because this tells us that Z is what's called a principal ideal domain. So it means that every ideal is generated by one, one, one element. When we, uh, if you go to my ring theory 
lectures when they're there, then um, this will be talked about in general. But this argument right here that, that, that I show that D divides every element of M is really the core argument that says that Z is um, a principal ideal domain. Again, if you don't, uh, you're not, if you're watching this video because you just want to know about uh, greatest common divisors of integers, just ignore what I just said and you won't be lost. Okay, so M is this uh, linear combinations of A and B. Um, D is uh, M0A plus N0B is one of them. And it's also the smallest positive integer in M. And what I want to show is that D divides every element of M. That's, that's all that remains um, um, to do. So, uh, so X, because it's a, um, a, an element of M, it's, um, it's also a linear combination of, of M, A, N, N, B. So, um, uh, so, so X, uh, so I'm, I'm picking an arbitrary element and I wanna show you that D divides X. Um, so, so how am I gonna do that? This is now a general technique that we use in elementary number theory all the time. And that's why the, uh, the division algorithm is powerful. You want to prove that D divides X, that X is a multiple of D, but you don't know that. But what you do know is that you have the division algorithm. So you know that you can take X and divide it by D, but maybe you get a remainder, but that remainder is going to be greater or equal to zero or less than D. And so the deal will be to show that the remainder is zero. So this is the process you start. You start with the division algorithm when you want to show that something divides something, and then eventually show that the remainder is zero. So X is QD plus R and R is greater or equal to zero or less than D. But let's think about this R for a second. R is X minus QD. So what is that? Well, X itself is MA plus NB and, and, and D is M0A plus N0B. So I can write those in and then I can combine terms and I will get that R is M minus QM0 times A plus N minus QN0 times B. And because it's a linear combination of A and B, it's in M. Now, R is um, uh, less than D, it's um, um, non-negative, and it's in M. But D was supposed to be, so R is in M, and it's less than D. Those are things we know for sure. But um, D was the smallest positive integer in M. So how could R be less than D and be in M? So it could not have been positive. But we know that R is greater or equal to zero. So what, what choice do we have other than saying that R must be zero? Because it can't be greater than zero. Because if it was greater than zero, then it would be smaller than D. It would be a smaller positive integer in M, but D was the smallest one. Um, and so R is zero. And if R is zero, then that means that X is D times Q. And then that means that D divides X. And we are done with our proof of uh, proof that um, the greatest common divisor of two integers is always um, a linear combination of those two integers. Uh, this is the end of this lecture. Um, I will see you in the next lecture.